Hello and welcome back to uh, Lore About 2, Dire of Amon Ra. I'm Ragnats. I'm doing a little bias monthly. It's fun. I'm liking it. Are you liking it? I hope you're liking it. So when we last left off, I crashed. It sucked. So we had found Ziggy. Poor Ziggy. time it's supposed to be. There's supposed to be someone in the Egyptian exhibit at some point. No one there. Nope. Okay. Let's go see if there's anything else we can do downstairs. Since apparently, uh, trying to play the intercoms was not the thing to do. Whee. You know what? There's enough people dying. It is officially an emergency. Let's break the shit out of it. Well, this is an interesting approach. It's There you go. You pick it up and place it in your purse. I don't know what I picked up. I assume it's a fire extinguisher, but nope, it's a lantern. That could be useful as well. Uh anything else to do? Hey, it's a ferret. Else in this room. A variety of shiny metals. Two of them with packs of dogs carrying birds in their mouths are marked with the word Reichsjagd de Gebrauchshund Verband. Others appear to be merit badges for the German youth equivalent of the Boy Scouts. A variety of shiny metals. Two of them with packs of dogs carrying World War I campaign medals. Kaiser Wilhelm of Germany is prominently featured. are a little different than those. Aha! Interesting. Am I gonna die? In the darkness of the secret passage, you're blind as a bat. You have a brave but brief battle during which you endure a battering of berserk and bellicose black bats without batting an eye. Then your body, bothered by bloody bite, becomes bereft of life. I had a lantern. Why didn't I use it? Seriously, though. Maybe I have to turn on the lantern in advance? I'm curious now where that goes. Why are there secret passages in a museum? You pick it up and place it in your purse. Save here? Yes, I can. Let's try that again. Now I have a lit lantern. Aha. I guess I could see a reason for there to be a turn off. No. A Rumkov coil lantern with a hand crank on the base. Hmm. Let's 
if Ernie wants to talk anymore. Something I can do for you, Miss Bull? Um... If that fellow were any more full of himself, he'd rise up and float away like a hot air balloon. The way he carries on, you'd think he discovered Atlantis. Should you be using past tense? Well, I don't see the gent too often. We working class folks don't see the big guys too often, you know what I mean? I know what you mean. Oh, I guess he's an okay fella. Poor cop. I do wish he'd stop leaving those grape stems all over the place, though. Hmm. Now there's a weaselly little fella. I've heard he's a stool pigeon. That's a dangerous way to make a living. Seems like everyone knows he's a stool pigeon. It really is a shock that he had survived this long. The Countess is a quite colorful old dame, isn't she? I can't help liking her. He's a quiet little fella. I think he does some accounting for the museum. Seems nice enough. Do you know Steve? Oh, he seems like a nice enough fella. I don't know him too well. Hmm. I haven't seen him in a while. I actually haven't seen him since the party. That fella gives me the willies. He's always hanging around, looking over my shoulder with those suspicious eyeballs of his. Also, to tell you the ugly truth, I just haven't trusted the Germans since the war. That Kaiser guy was a real high hat. You fought in the Great War, Mr. Leach? Yes, I did, Miss Bo. I came back with a plate in my head and a chest full of medals, and then I couldn't get a job to save my soul. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, don't let it bother you, Miss Bo. I'm just jawing. I'm doing fine now. Well, fortunately, that changes in the next. No, oh, never mind. If, Miss Delacroix is a wonderful lady, Miss Bo. A delight to work for. Well, he's an intense sort of a gent. He's all been out of shape about this dagger business, and he hangs around Dr. Carter a lot. He looks ready to blow a blood vessel to me. Everyone keeps pointing at uh, Dr. Smith. Why, that, that's me, Miss Bo, Ernie Leach. I thought you reporters were supposed to have good memories. I can figure that, if anything, that makes him the least likely suspect. No, I can't say I ever met the man. I suspect you did. Museum. At first, I wasn't sure I'd like it here in this big spooky old place, but it was so peaceful at night and there's so many interesting things everywhere. I really enjoy it now. Uh, yeah, there are places. Meh. I don't have much use for carbon paper. You might ask that Ramsey's fella. He's a bean counter. He probably uses it. I haven't seen him in a while either. Mr. Leach, do you have any idea who might have taken the dagger of Amon Ra? I sure don't. Well, I halfway wonder if it wasn't one of those Egyptian fellas. <laughs> they probably think I took it. Was the dagger well guarded? Oh sure, it was locked up tighter than a, v tighter than a drum. Somebody really pulled a fast one. I'm sorry, Miss Bo, but I'm kind of busy right now. Is there something I can help you with? If not, I've got work to do. Miss Bo, I've got a lot of problems right. This door is this door is locked. 
That's inconvenient. Have you managed to go left? Is locked. Nope. Have I had a chance to actually really talk to Wolf at all? Have I given people a chance to leave? Ah. Excellent. The intercom crackles and you hear... Ernie, it's Olympia. The release valve in number 13 seems to be jammed. Take a look at it when you have a chance. Wire cutters. You pick it up and place it in your purse. A mop complete with bucket. Apparently they haven't been used for a while since they're stuck to the floor. Hmm. You pick it up and place it in your purse. This appears to be a large button on the wall. When you push the button, you hear a sliding noise off in the distance, clearly originating outside of this room. Hmm. Ernie's index to the stored items in the alcohol vats. Current fat contents, alcoholic preservation lab. One, koala bears. Two, turtles. Three, snakes. Four, hippo. Five, ground sloth. Six, skunks. Seven, Loch Ness monster. Eight, ostrich. Nine, lemmings. Ten, unicorn. Eleven, creature from the Black Lagoon. 12. Rats 13. Warthogs 14. King Edward of Daventry Hmm. <laughs> Daventry. That's a King's Quest reference. Alright, so 13 is that, that one? That 13. Let's try it out. Let's see what's gunking it up. Hello? Yes. It's heavy. It's shiny. It's real gold. It's got a sharp point at one end. It's... The Dagger of Amon-Ra. You pick it up and place it in your purse. <laughs> Boy, the alcohol fumes sure are strong in here. It's a great, great way to do that. Huge fanfare, and then you pick it up and put it in your purse, all matter of factly. All right, can we go in here? This door is locked. No, we still cannot. But we now have like a sharp thing. Let's go. Just trying to see if there's a voice coming from vets. But nope. A typical. A tip. A tip. Come on, a tip. Come on. One of the skeletons in the box. Feels like a pain. Feels. The glitch. Feels like. Feels. No. The glint doesn't glint when you hold your finger on I forget how I made it up here. While this... That, I think, maybe? 
There we go. Man, let's try prying it with the dagger. Which is while this is an interesting approach. While, while, while. Where is the actual selector? While, while this, while, while, while this, while, while, while. I don't know which part of the dagger I want to actually. The skeleton key is firmly affixed to the Bosch painting with glue. You are unable to... Okay, so now that... So now that I know that, let's... While the... While... While the... While... While the... While... 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 What part while, of while, the... While, Dagger. While, am while, I trying while, to use? While, 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 while. Okay, let's try something else then. Wait, can I use, can I look at it further? Inspe inspect. Aha. With ca Oops. I should have said. I should have seen myself. Either way, carefully I got the key. That should let me into that room, right? This door won't open this way. This door is locked. Another lab door. This door won't open this way. Well, then how do I open it? That's not the sort of thing you want to examine too closely. This door w I don't have ideas. Can I use the wire cutters here? While this is an interesting approach. While, while this is one of the three wires that formerly suspended the terror. You pick it up Doink. and place it in your purse. Can I do it the other wires too? While this is an interesting while the while the while the, while the, while the maybe not That ferret is in here. Let's see if it does anything.
Or did I miss my chance to watch the ferret do something? Oh. No. That was not very exciting at all. This door is locked. The room feels remarkably well preserved. It's the Alcoholic Preservation Laboratory. Another lab door. Could I pick the lock with the wire? While this is an... While this... While... No. Uh... It's used carbon paper. This curious device is a lasso at the end of a pole used for the humane capture of snakes in the wild or wild snakes or something like that. Feels like a key. This door. This door. Don't touch it. The button is still depressed from the last time you pushed it. Aww. I didn't mean to give it some Don't more depression. It. Don't touch Best to leave this room right where it is. Otherwise, Ernie won't be able to find it when he comes looking for it. Ho oh, ho 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 ho. Don't touch one of those new-fangled intercom units. An interesting shell specimen, formerly belonging to a leaping nautilus. The leaping nautilus was rather an unsuccessful creature since it is now extinct. Obviously, this one is a mere shell of its former self. Ernie's private boxed collection of World War I souvenirs. A rare skeletal specimen of the saber-toothed jackalope discovered high on the frozen slopes of Mount Everest. Extinct for over 20,000 years, scientists speculate that this jackalope was in the process of climbing the highest peak in the Himalayas when it died suddenly of arthritis. Let's try the other side of the museum again. Ooh. I'm a sneaky one. Sneaky, sneaky. Am I too late? Where'd she go? Ah. Uh -huh. Is she holding a painting?
Well, well. Good evening, Countess. What are you doing here? I just happen to be hiding behind the tapestry. <laughs> You're lying. How could you tell? Nobody just happens to hide behind a museum tapestry. And nobody just walks around inside a museum late at night with paintings under their arms. Paintings? Oh, you mean these paintings? Ah, uh, I just found them laying around on the floor and I picked them up so no one would step on them. I don't think so. You don't think so? Are you accusing me of something, you silly girl? What do you think? I think you're a rude girl who needs to learn some manners. The nerve going around accusing people of stealing paintings. Did I say anything about you stealing them? Well, of course you did. Don't try to trick me, girl. I've got more tricks than you have brain cells. One thing I have to ask myself is, why did you bring those paintings to a meeting with Dr. Carrington this time of night? How did you know I was meeting Dr. Carrington? I found a note beside his body. His body? You talk about him like he was dead. Yes, he is. Dead as a doorknob. You didn't know about it? You're trying to trick me again. Dr. Carrington is alive and well and working in his office. Well, you're right about him being in his office, but he's quite dead, I assure you. Oh, my God! And you seem to be a logical murder suspect. Wait a second. You're not going to pin this one on me. I didn't have anything to do with it. Why would I want to kill him? We've got a perfectly good art burglary scheme going. Art burglary? Uh, I think I said too much. I think if so. If you're trying to convince me that you're not the murderer, you're not doing a very good job of it. What do I care what you think anyway? You're not a cop. But I am a reporter, and I could write about you in the newspaper. Of course, your reputation would be ruined, and the police would get very interested in you. But you're tough, so I'm sure you could handle it. Look, it was just a little deal I worked out with Dr. Carrington. An art forger duplicates the paintings on the wall of the gallery. Then we hang them up in place of the real ones, which we sell to private collectors. Didn't you think someone would catch on after a while? Are you kidding? That's the beauty of the plan. When we had replaced all the paintings, we were going to slash them and make it look like someone vandalized the real paintings. No one would ever think we'd go to the trouble of forging paintings just to destroy them. And Carrington is here to see that no one gets too nosy. You mean he was here? I swear I didn't have anything to do with his death. He was my cash cow. I brought him over from Europe just for this reason. Now that's it. I'm not saying any more about it. I don't feel like talking about that now. You could probably put that painting back, just, you know. The faceplate on the armor is slightly open, as if something is protruding from the inside of the dark helm. The face... Okay. What's protruding? Your close scrutiny reveals that there is indeed a body within the cramped confines of the suit of armor. Okay. Dr. Carter's body has been indelicately crammed into the suit of armor. His filmy eyes gaze in mute shock. His head is bent at an unlikely angle and the skin is puckered where the helmet's edges bite into the expanding flesh. Didn't O'Reilly say that? It's Dr. Pippin Carter, famous dead archaeologist. Didn't O'Reilly say that he was taken by the coroner? Suspicious. 
Is there anyone in this museum who's not suspicious? Hell, even I'm technically suspicious. Let's see if any luck with this door now. Now it's one o'clock. Excellent. Finally. Oh, hey. You pick it up and place it in your purse. What is this? It's too high up for you to examine with a magnifying glass, but fortunately there's nothing telltale on the sack of plaster. It's a sack of plaster, sometimes used for making molds. You have no use for a sack of plaster. I could. It's the door to the Mammology Lab's cold storage locker. Ooh, meat. You pick it up and place it in your purse. I have the most gross purse ever. Oh, what do you find? Ferret. Oh, I can't save. This trunk is locked. I have a feeling. Yeah. Oh! I feel like I remember that, that being a thing from way back when. A skeleton lies in the trunk, its bones picked clean by the domestic beetles. There are little things They've I remember from the game. efficiently removed every last shred of flesh making the skeleton nearly impossible to identify. Not enough, but a lot. It appears to be a gold pocket watch. A close look reveals an inscription on the watch. To Dr. Archibald Carrington III, for your years of dedicated service, many thanks from your staff at the British Museum. Uh -huh. You pick it up and place it in your purse. Two forty-five. Okay. Well, let's see where that thing goes. Have you ever while this is an interest while yeah. Huh. That's an interesting secret passage. over there, huh? An hour later. Hey! You hear muffled voices coming through the door to Yvette's office. I was say, I wonder where Tut's going, but now I'm more curious about this. You lied to me! Well, lass, I guess that makes us even. You lied to me! You had something to do with a dagger burglary. You've been sleeping with someone else. I saw you go off with that dock worker. I've never slept with Steve and the Ziggy fellow. He told me about you and the dagger. And you believe that little weasel. I've arrested the man more times than I can count. The Ziggy, I know him a long time. He would not lie to me. That man had lied to his own mother if someone paid him for it. Ziggy, he says you are working with the Carrington to steal the dagger. 
Lies. You can't be trusting the man. If he wasn't already dead, I'd pound the truth out of him. Maybe you already did. Were you sleeping with the little rat then? Of course not. You really surprise me, lass. I'd think you grew up on the streets accusing me of burglary like that. Where I grew up doesn't matter, does it? The important thing is... Wait, did you hear something at the door? Yeah, I was hearing it too. Keep your voice down then. Nobody here but us chickens. Or ferrets. Damn, where did Mr. Smith go? Dr. Smith. I haven't talked to him at all. <laughs> One day I'll make it across. Maybe. Can they go down here? Ooh. It's a great goose step. Wolfie, your facial scars are so wonderful. How did you get them? Fencing, my Strudel. As a young man, I would fence with my Heidelberg friends. We would stop our opponent's saber just before it went through our faces, which would make the scars you see now. Ah, that is very interesting. You did not use masks to protect your faces? Nein. That would have been considered unmanly. Hmm. You'll have to show me how to do that sometime. There are many things I can show you, my strudel. Perhaps we should go somewhere less public, Wolfie. Oh, yeah. Good idea. Particularly since there's an annoying reporter wandering around the museum. That is not something I would have allowed if I was running things here. Give it time, Wolfie. Perhaps you will be running things here someday. If I have anything to say about it. Oh? What can you do? There are ways. But come, let us speak of these things in more privacy. Suspicious! Is there no one in this museum who's not suspicious? Are you kidding me? The others are right there. The fabric of the shirt appears to be clinging somewhat to Ernie's chest. These are animal hairs of some sort, too coarse to be human. You pick it up and place it in your purse. You examine Ernie's head carefully, searching for contusions, bruises, or other evidence of foul play. You see little, but you do notice a faint odor, not immediately identifiable. The pants are intact, but the smell emanating from them is noticeable. It's as if he took a swim in bathtub gin. Despite your closest examination, you find nothing unusual about Ernie's outstretched right arm. Sounds like he got dunked in one of those animal vats. The leather of Ernie's shoes are soaked through and through. The scent is an overpowering mixture of sweat, shoe polish, and alcohol. Yep, sounds like he got drowned in that vat. And the two of them just walk on by. Ridiculous. Good evening, Dr. Miklos. Oh, good evening, Miss <laughs> Bull. <laughs> so, about that uh, Ernie Leach who's dead right here. It's unfortunate that Ernie died, but his body is nicely displayed on that mastodon, don't you think? 
Makes quite a nice exhibit, actually. Awkward. Ach, you are smelling like the brewery, mein Kapitan. Either you've been drinking, or you've been eating too many of those grapes. Sure and be Gora. A man needs a little nip from his flask now and then, doesn't he? Personally, I do not require the drinking of the alcohol. It would impair my mental and physical skills. Ernie Leach has been murdered! What was that, lass? Ernie is dead! So, you've finally come to us to confess, is that it? Confess? No! I'm reporting a murder! And you was the first one to find the body again? Well, I guess so. Quite a coincidence, no. Fraulein. I think we should be interrogating you to well, learn the both truth! Of, both of them I've have... had enough of your lies! But calm down, Heimlich. Both of them. If there's any interrogating to be done, I'll be the one who does it. Now then, lass, where did you find the body? The Mastodon room. He's hanging from some Mastodon tusks. Ach, he's probably just sleeping on the job. No, I'm sure he's dead. Well, I'll go take a look at him then. If I need to talk to you, I'll find you later. I wonder if he smells like alcohol because he's the one who killed Ernie. Act 4, Museum of the Dead. You're doing a fine job, Laura. Alright. We'll do Act 4 next time. Till then, folks. Doodle freaking loo. I'm playing a game!